Bowls Buddies, hello and welcome to another Wednesday and another episode of AC. That's me talking bowls and we've actually started doing some playing. Woo! Some level of normality has returned to life for several of us and isn't it wonderful. It was absolutely fantastic to see people out and about bowling safely by the way um yeah really really uh good to see everyone this weekend this past weekend uh and also yesterday but i'll tell you more about that in a moment so thanks guys for watching remember if you enjoy this video please hit the like button and if you're not already a bulls buddy and a member of this wonderful community of ours please hit the subscribe button it's absolutely free of charge and don't forget to click that little notification bell the notifications of new content on the channel which is usually four times a week but definitely three because i'm on holiday so okay so let's run you through uh the weekend's activities certainly on my my part uh the griffin got back in uh into full swing with a three competition weekend on the saturday it was the Clifford Armitage uh, Memorial event and Clifford Armitage was one of the founder members of the Griffin back in I think it was 1969. Uh, Clifford was a very good player, came over to Lancashire to play in a lot of comps, I, I think he won the star in around 68-69 sort of time. But the story is he got banned for playing in a competition on a Sunday by Yorkshire county bowling association and because of that he and a few friends got together and started the winter bowling club at uh at the griffin in huddersfield uh just off manchester road and the rest is history it's been there never missed a beat apart from covid unfortunately but uh we got back in full swing yours truly managed to play a few games got to the semi-final and then lost to Craig Gant 21-10 I think and then Craig beat Jack Dyson in the final which I'm told I didn't stop I had to go and uh, visit my mother-in-law um, Craig was in a very early lead uh, got pegged right back and I think he won 21-20 at the finish uh, in what was a great restart to the season the following day the Sunday was the Rose Bowl final, which had been held over from late December, early January. Um, and once again, yours truly managed to get to the semi-final, where he got promptly destroyed by Jack Dyson, uh, who went on to win the event against Gary Siswick, 31-24-ish. So two competitions, two semi-final appearances, Lost to the winner both times. That's what's going on my headstone when I shuffle off this mortal coil. He lost to the winner. And then on Monday there was the Griffin Classic. Now I decided to have a day off because four rounds of golf followed by two full days of bowling uh, means my 47 year old body does not really want to play ball. So I had the Monday off and once again the winner was Jack Dyson who won the Griffin Classic beating Ashley Dakin. I think it was comfortable in the final 21-10 from memory. So Jack Dyson has uh, started where he left off really winning everything in sight at the Griffin uh, and bowling will continue there next Saturday and Sunday. So if you would like to come down for some socially distanced bowling um, I'm not sure we'd stop me if you came round. Shh, don't tell anyone. Uh, okay, and then yesterday, yesterday I went on my travels. Um, decided to go and pick up the first lot of bowls that I've had turned down. And they are currently being sprayed up as we speak. They look absolutely amazing. Uh, Ian Wallace from the Burton Bowl Centre has done a fantastic job with them. I cannot tell you how pleased I am. And I am looking forward to showing them to you next week uh, when they'll all be lovingly sprayed up and looking amazing. Uh, then I called in at Willen Hall to see my pal Maxi, who donated 
a massive number of balls that I was totally unexpected in my in my little Peugeot 107, no Citroen 107, is it C1? I don't know what I've got. It's amber's really not mine. And then after that, and I did. Oh, I felt so guilty because uh, he'd bought me some cake. And of course, me being the uh, the person I am, who's currently on a bit of a diet to try and lose a bit of weight to get him fettled for the season, uh, I had to politely decline, which made me feel really guilty. But I'm sorry about that. More for Maxie and his missus to enjoy. And then from there, I went down to Yield Knoll, and thanks to uh, Bill Bryden and Suzanne, the secretary there, uh, I think in total. Was it 16 sets I got and a Jax? I think something like that, or 20 sets um, from Ye Old Knoll, yes. So that was my trip yesterday. It was quite long, um, 300 mile round trip, but all for the good of the game, hopefully. Um, so thanks to those guys who I've mentioned. Uh, massive thanks to Gavin Parker, uh, Neil Cook, um, the guys at the Griffin various people at the Griffin, too many to name really, uh, who have donated cash and bowls uh, and I've also purchased bowls as well which helps me fund uh, the, the development project. So thank you for every everyone that's donated. Um, I'm still taking donations, I've over 130 odd sets of bowls downstairs, most of them uh, will be turned down I'm aiming to get at least 80 sets turned down to uh, the smallest bowls possible, two pound high density size. Um, yeah, so that's going well. I've got 40 jacks sprayed up, so I'm trying to get enough for 10 kits to start with. So four jacks, eight sets of bowls per kit. Um, I'm short of mats, I'm short of mats. Don't seem to be getting any mats donated. I've maybe got 10. Um, and I really don't want to have to buy them if I can help it. But if anyone out there can put me in touch with uh, anyone that makes rubber matting of a suitable weight density, uh, that I, I'll cut them out myself if I have to. I'm not that fussed. Uh, but any donations of mats, anyone who can help me with the matting, absolutely brilliant. That would be muchly, muchly appreciated. Uh, next thing. A lot of uh, leagues are about to start. I know two of the leagues I play in um, are starting April. One's April 20th and one's April 23rd, I think. Uh, the Super League that I've been talking about, that's not going to start until July. I don't. I think that's a sensible move. I mean, it's not a long season anyway. But I've noticed that a lot of leagues have started, which can only be good. The only thing I would say... The only thing, and it, I can't just get my head around it, maybe it's, you know, nearly 40 years of, of competition, bowling and, and competing all the time, is a lot of leagues, they're not having promotion or relegation. So basically you're playing a league season of friendlies, which I, doesn't, doesn't, I can't compute that, to be honest. If I'm turning up for a league game, I want something to be riding on it. Um not you know let's just have a cup of tea and a and a, and a bit of a, a chuck and i understand that that's better than nothing please if if i was offered uh, a league season without promotion and relegation i'd probably take it just to get back to some normality but i don't like it uh it's certainly something that um feels alien to me and i, I Yes, I can understand it, as I've said, but uh, the sooner we get back to normal, the sooner we get back to playing proper competitions, proper, proper competitive balls, the better, in my opinion. Um, yes, and I've also seen, you know, f for some eight-person teams, if they're short, they can have players doubling up and things. Yeah, absolutely fine. Don't see an issue with that, not a problem. But uh, promotion and relegation, for me... Uh, you've got to have a winner at the end of the day, in my humble opinion. But um, maybe not for everybody. As long as we're getting balling, maybe I shouldn't be so uh, so precious about it. Hopefully, on Friday, 
British Crown Green should have sorted out whether there's going to be a county championship. I know the Federation have been very proactive in getting their um, their calendar out, and I know that there's one or two teams um, who aren't playing in that one or two areas. Absolutely fine. I can understand that, no problem. Um, but it's good to see the Federation getting those fixtures out. And I think they've just curtailed some of the events that I don't think I think one of the team events isn't taking place at the end of the season, which, you know, that's okay. Um so all good. It's it's good, it's good. I like to see there's there's competitions being released and they're filling quickly and there's new competitions coming out from places I haven't bowled at in, in years. So uh it's really good to see and um, I know I've said it before and I don't want to bore you all too much I think it's a bit make or break is this season and I hope 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 so much that it's a make rather than a break but we will see um, not a lot else for me to say I don't think that's covered everything I wanted to it's only a short one today uh, comment corner will be a little bit longer tomorrow um, I know I haven't done an interview yet I keep not putting it off that's the wrong word um, I'm just really really busy at the minute uh, what with school work and other things uh, so bear with me I will get round to one if you have any other sort of suggestions that you might like me to touch upon leave a comment get in touch um, and I'll see what I can do so I'm going to leave it there I'm going to say goodbye, hope to see you tomorrow for Comment, blah, 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 for comment Corner. Uh, there will be another looking back at the past game on Friday. I'm not sure whether they're going down too well. The viewing figures aren't particularly good. Maybe you've all seen them. Uh, I don't know. Or maybe it's me waffling that's putting people off. Who knows? Uh, but I'll give it another goal this Friday. Uh, until then, guys, stay safe. If you're going on the green, stay safe. Keep the masks on when you go shopping. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye for now.